I just thought um, I would come on and say hi to everybody. I can see everybody scrolling up. I can't wave at you all, otherwise I'd be touching the screen constantly. Anyway, um, I'm Tanya. I work at Genomi Canada with Michael um, Smith, and I'm sure you've maybe seen some of his videos. I just wanted to come on because I'm a glutton for punishments. I was like, oh, you know, I did a couple of uh, classes for Genome America and they're way trickier than they seem. So I said to myself, you're not gonna learn this unless you do it more than twice. So why not on a Saturday during lockdown in Ontario, you come on and you practice. So I'm like, I don't know. So hopefully this goes well. Um, what I wanted, so what I wanted to talk to you about today was, um, I don't know if you know, but you can I illustrate as well as um, do quilting. So what I've been decided to do is I'd like to do more doodling with my machine. So basically drawing with thread. Lots of people do it. I know it's like, I'm just trying to see if there's any comments. Okay, everybody can hear me. Um, I know a lot of people that do it. I've tried it, I'm okay at it, but I thought I need to practice. And I don't know if you know Austin Cleon. Yeah, he has written a, uh, wrote, written a series of three books. I don't have them with me. Anyway, he talks about practicing more and sucking less um, and challenging yourself to try something for 100 days to see if you can get better at it. So, <laughs> like I don't have enough to do. I mean, I don't really have enough to do, but I do. Um, I decided, I'll show you the first one that I did. So. This is a little carrot. It's, is it reversed or is it okay? Oh, it'll be reversed when I switch it around. Okay, right now I'm reversed. I will, I'm gonna switch it around when I sew. Uh, anyway, so this is a little carrot one that I did. And what I did is I took, a, this is a four inch square. I appliqued with uh, fusible the carrots on it. And I decided to draw on top of that just to get practice of drawing the thread, basically. Um, I've done a few. I got these prompts from um, this account I follow called They Draw and Cook, which is totally cool if you like um, cooking illustrations or food illustrations of any kind, they're awesome. Anyway, so they had a prompts and I picked up on the prompts. So there's berries. These are going to be backwards, but you get the idea. Uh, cauliflower. Peanut. And, oh, there's only one left, walnut. So that's where I got to. Um, when I start, I tend to make like little drawings like that from which I do the applique. So I'm gonna turn the camera around now so it's not reversed. You don't wanna look at me. Um, and you can see what I'm doing. So hopefully I don't disconnect you all. Good luck. Here we go. Ooh. Okay, that's my <laughs> that's my uh, my studio wall. Here we are. And this is, I'm gonna get it, I'm trying to get a nice angle for you. I'm gonna stand up for a sec so that you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully my phone does not fall out of here. Okay, mm -hmm. that looks good to me. Does that look good to you guys? I hope it's okay. This is where I'm gonna start showing you things. So there we go. So let's go back to what I'm doing. I'm working on 6700P. She is my favorite machine. I love her so much. Um, what I'm doing is, I'm taking, like I'll show you one of the ones. So I start with a prompt, for example, apple, easy, right? Apple, squash, soup, I think this was an apricot. Um, I draw a little image and I get my applique ready. So do that. And then for example, that's squash. So I've done it with uh, heat and bond, um, made the drawing part of it, like, or the base, the background part of it. And what I want to do on top of that is use my 6700P. Oh, um, I should do a heart. I don't know how to do a heart. Should I do a heart? <laughs> anyway, I want to use my 6700P to practice drawing on this so that I end up with something that looks like this. Now, again, this is part of my, if you're just coming in, it's, I decided to practice this for 100 days just to see because it's something I'd really like to put more into my work and I know in order to do it well I have to practice so from here this is this is where it starts it starts with something just a simple applique and you get to that um, 
it's, it's kind of indicative of how I draw as well. I'm trying to be looser with my lines, not super worried and perfectionist about it, just have fun with it. So that's what we're working towards. Now, a couple of things I'll go over. I have my 6700P. I'm not gonna move the camera around a whole bunch just so I don't um, cause any problems for you, but I 6700P, I've got actually, let's see if I can go down and show you. Oh, there we go. There we go. Bear with me. That's not too bad. That's good. Um, so I've got the free, I guess it's a free motion. I can't remember. <laughs> I should know this Perth Motions and Accessories Coordinator, but of course I blank on it. Anyway, this is the foot I have on here. Um, I think it's the free motion. Michael, if he's watching, might be able to save me or Celine. Um, anyway, so, and I added the clear, the little clear foot on top of it so that, um, I could see what I was doing when this was under. So I put this foot on. Now this foot, it requires a straight stitch plate. So you'll have the foot, I've got, the, there's a letter on it, but I'm not gonna, oh there, clear, <laughs> I love you, Michael. Clear view free motion foot is what we have here. We have a straight stitch plate and we have the feed dogs dropped. Uh, I've put in a, this time I tried to be prepared. <laughs> it's a dinner plate, yes, exactly. Which is perfect for, you know, the fact that I'm doing food. So you've got your foot, you've got your straight stitch needle plate. Please say I still have it on. Yes. And you've got your red tip needles. The reason I use the red tip or the 14s, I think they are 9014, is because you're going to be moving this around underneath the needle and it puts some stress, puts some stress on the needle as you're doing it, which obviously. Um, and I have bent, I bent a blue tip 11 as well when trying to draw um, with this. So I realized I better use the 14 needle. So again, you've got your foot, you've got your straight stitch needle plate. I've threaded it. Oh, I wanted to go over quickly thread. There's so many things to remember. Michael, you make it look too easy. Um, this is, this prompt for this one, let's put this out of the way, is kimchi. I'm trying to do a jar of kimchi. Um, and so I started with just the applique, like as in, I'll show you what I started with, just the applique, like as in the apricots are, right? Just the applique. Um, and then I, I'm working with... Did I take the labels off? Some of them I did. <laughs> I'm working with Madeira Katona. We carry this at Genome Canada. It's awesome. It's been really good seeing as it's a cotton under this kind of stress of going in and out of the fabric and movement. It. So I will be honest, sometimes it will fray, but that's more to do with me moving too quickly and not respecting the speed and the thread. Um, in general, it's been really great. The reason I use the cotton, because some people say, well, why wouldn't you use like a poly, is because I like I like the variegated. I like the way it looks. I like the thickness of it. In this case, I used, uh, I think actually, this is in the strawberries. And then, see, I actually put myself close to me this time. This, oh, there we go. Probably see it better. There we go. This is the lettering. And the extra so that's for all of these so far is that blurry for all of these so far I think I've got too many things in the way um, for all these so far I've used variegated because I like the look of it so just sticking with what works so that's a completed one that's my kimchi what we're gonna do is stop talking so much right and show you how this works <laughs> of course I'm nervous oh so I put a piece of, um, <laughs> I was gonna say interfacing, stabilizer underneath, just something. This is a paper, um, paper I think it's a tearaway one. Uh, I find it works the best. I've made it, I make it a little bigger than what I'm, the piece of fabric I'm stitching on just to allow for me, be able, me to be able to move it. I'll show you when I did with the kimchi, you can see, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I haven't decided what to do about this later, but it's definitely the best to give support under your needle when you're moving it around so much. So without even talking about this, let's give it a shot on live. So let's go. What I find with this technique is, ow, 
is I bring the um, thread up to the top, the bobbin thread. I find if you don't, this, if you're switching threads a lot, can get messy really quick on the back. So bring your threads up to the top or your, your bobbin thread. Um, ideally, what I would like is those to stay under there and not get in my way. The last thing you need is them causing problems. I don't cut them too short before you start because um, if you cut them too short, they will kind of pop back into the machine sometimes. So I give it a little bit of length. I hold it out of my way. Um, the There's no, I'm just gonna show you quick. Oop, there's my finger. Let's see. This is what I'm using. Um, there's only one setting for it. It does show you that the feed dogs are down. I did do one earlier before I went live <laughs> so that I would remember that I had it right. Let's hope everything goes well. I'm just trying to angle it. Sorry for so much movement, but I'd like you to be able to see. I always think the hardest hardest thing is when you're, show, when you're seeing what somebody does, you're like, what exactly is going on? I wish I had a better camera. This is my phone. I have a tripod that I'm borrowing from Amanda and just doing the best I can as we all are right now. Anyway, so to get started, I usually do a couple of stitches just in place to kind of secure the thread. Like I said, the last thing I want is it popping back up into the machine at this point because that's going to end, end up with problems. So I'm going to show you and get started. Thank you, Michael. I'm going to get started and just give you a little demonstration. So what I do is I'm trying to just doodle with it. My speed is pretty consistent. I'm trying to breathe. And just remember, this is fun. And I'm play I'm just playing around. It's don't go too quick. As long, like I said, as long as you're kind of consistent, then you can start to. Once you do a few around an image, you find you relax a bit. So you can get started like that. That's with that one color. I will, sorry for bumping that. Um, snip those off, get them out of the way. So this is where you can do more and more and more. You will get little bits come off like that. It's not, like I said, it's not supposed to be Perfect, if you're really worried about that, this may be not the technique for you. You can see it ends up something like that. I'll keep going if you guys want. I mean, why not, right? So I've got, this is a little butternut squash. The prompt was squash. And this is a little squash blossom because uh, I love zucchini. It's the, the zucchini squash blossoms that the Italians do and they, Make an appetizer out of them they fry them they batter them and fry them oh my god they're so good i don't know if you've ever had them but i'm a big fan of food as you can probably tell by most of the quilting i do okay so i'm going to show you again bring your threads up move them off to the side hold them it's a little this is quite small i will be honest this is a small thing to start out on if you were going to try this technique i wouldn't necessarily i would probably maybe go for a six inch block if you were gonna try this, or a six inch piece of fabric, I make my um, stabilizer a little bigger, just like I said, so I can have something to hold on to. Um, and then you just, usually what I do is I start by going around the outside. It just gets me a little more relaxed. One thing, it's really funny, it seems strange, but as I do this, sometimes it gets away from me and I realize, you're the one with the foot on the pedal. You can stop it if it's not, if it's uh, too fast for you and if it's not working. So just stop. It's You get a little tense. This is the free motion. It's tricky. I don't blame anybody who finds it intimidating. But the more you try it, the better you'll get at it. And then you'll start to have a little more fun. And what will start to happen is like with anything, um, your own style is going to start to show up in how you do this. Don't, I would say, don't try to make it like someone else's. Just sort of do what you would like to do. And don't worry too much about what everyone else is doing. 
I'm going to see if I have time. I've got about 15 minutes. I didn't want to like spend a huge amount of time because I'm sure you guys have other things to do than to watch me sew this, but I'm going to add. So now I'm going to add a, sorry, that's my bracelets. Um, the variegated blue green. I'm going to play around with that little swirl, that little, uh, what is it called? Vine coming off of the top of the squash. So we hope that this will, sorry for the angle, I'm just trying to get in here. And then I always remember, bring the needle all the way to the top, lower the foot, put into the needle thread. And of course, usually when I'm not live, this works like a charm. So let's see, and it did. Thank goodness, thank you. I love this machine. So again, I'm working on 6700P, awesome, awesome machine. Uh, my favorite. I know there's lots, there's lots of different Janome machines, but this one, she does everything I ask and more. So again, you're going to bring up that thread from the bottom. It's a little tricky. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. <laughs> trying to get under the dinner plate. There we go. Just pull that thread up. I'm going to go, whoops, I'm going to go down again, back up. So I want, this takes a little time. Some people might find it a little finicky. It makes a difference. I'm not a person to spend a lot of, I'm usually, let's see, of course, now I get it all twisted up. Um, I'm usually quick about things. I don't spend a lot of time. I'm impatient. I like to see how things are going. But this, this technique of bringing the threads to the top, taking the time, will give you a better result. I guarantee that. Why? Well, I'm not supposed to say that on live. But I guarantee, I, I'm, I'm sure it's going to make it so much easier for you. So again, a couple of stitches in place. And then you're just going to, it's a little tricky trying to do it and fall and watch if there's any comments. I don't know if there is, I don't see any. If anybody has any questions, it might be a little noisy now while I'm, and you can go back and forth quite a few times. Uh, if you have too many layers of the um, heat and bond underneath, it doesn't like that. So like with some of them, I try to remove some of the extra heat and bond behind if I can because this is my soup one. Let me just show you this. Because I did soup, this is a soup pot, and this is carrot, onion, and celery because if you make soup, you start with a mirepoix, which is these three ingredients because I'm just a food nerd. And I did little apples as well, Oop. which I will be drawing on later. But, so you can just, and, and don't, just stick to the, the image, maybe move off. So once you're feeling a little more confident, and again, this is just practicing. It's, it, the good thing is you're going, when you go back and forth over and over, it <laughs> make it look like you meant to do it. Oh, see, that's what I mean. Sometimes that will happen. Often I'm not moving it, not paying attention and it gets a little unhappy, but this is how it goes. So you just, Trim it and start again. So again, just uh, do I have any, does anybody have any questions or anything they want to know about how to do this? It's super fun. Once, <laughs> once you get the hang of it, it's really good. And I'm looking forward to seeing the difference between the first time I did it and the hundredth time I did it, do it, which I haven't gotten to yet but I'd like to see how it changes and I'd like to see what I learn. So I'm gonna go back. Again, if you're doing something small to practice, you're not getting yourself too stressed about it. Where is my bobbin thread? Oop, come on. There she is. I think I might, yes, that's what happened. She was still attached from before. See, sorry, she was attached from before. So let's just get that out of the way and let's start again and go down. Bring the thread up. I can see how time gets away from you. I thought this would be like maybe 10 minutes. I'm already at 20 and I could probably talk about this for a lot longer. <laughs> I know Michael's pain right now, or no, not really pain. So you're gonna go in and you're gonna do that. Okay. Now, if you want to, this is basically doodling in fabric, right? What you can do, and it's a, it, it gets trickier. I also like to do lettering. So I added the word of each of the prompts. So I added berries. I added, oop, 
peanut, and I just practice it. Like I said, I, I didn't get myself too worried about it. The point is to move the fabric under, under the needle, take your time, try. This is my cauliflower. I didn't have room, so I put cauliflower, and then I went up with the R. And the more I see, it's it's funny because if you had done the first one, what was my first one? Carrot. Say I didn't continue with this theme, it would look like, oh, she didn't do so well on that one. But then now they're all going to look like that and see it'll look like that was my plan all along. That's usually how I live most of my life. <laughs> this is a walnut. So again, use, I encourage you to use, I use cotton threads because I like the look of them. You could use poly threads. Oh, what weight thread? Um, that's a good question. I am using a 50 weight. These ones specifically are Madeira. Um, you could use, I've done it with Aurafils as well. I just didn't have as many of the Aurafil um, variegated. I like to switch things around um, either in the lettering or in the applique, but it's a 50 weight. I don't know, I wouldn't go too much, you wouldn't want anything thicker just because there's a lot going on under the under the needle and you don't want to upset your machine at all. Not that she gets upset, but I respect what she can do. And I don't want to ask more of her than she can give me. And so far, she's been awesome. So again, you just do just a little practice. You'll be, you can try lettering too. You can try whatever you want. This, again, this is just done with um, fusible. It's really simple. I use heat and bond light. I, again, I'll just go it over real quick before I finish. I'm kind of liking this now. <laughs> you draw your little image, like say your apple. And then you put it on the back if you don't, you, I'm sure you guys know how to use uh, heat and bond. You choose your colors, you fuse it down, and then you're gonna get your little piece of stabilizer and you're gonna put it on top. And then you're gonna practice with this foot, with your, your uh, feed dogs down, a, a bigger needle, like I said, a 14, and hopefully, I would love to see if anybody wants to try it. Please post it and tag us. Uh, we love to tag, hashtag share the genome we love, which is what Michael always says. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this little short um, example of the things that I do when I'm at home. And I'm hoping to do some more of these again for practice and also because I kind of am a little bit lonely and I kind of like to connect with people that's not necessarily really easy for everybody right now. So I just would like to hang out with you guys in my studio. So I will just flip this up Oop. and I'll flip it back around to say hi, <laughs> to say thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit or you had a little bit of fun or I showed you something maybe you didn't see before. If you have any questions, please message us. And if there's things you'd like us to see, or, or like us to see, like to see us try at home, um, give us some suggestions. I know I'd love to try anything just to show you. I love to share um, the things that we make. It's really important that you continue with your creativity. If you feel like it, by no means, I know it's like, don't feel like you have to, but um, I just really hope that everybody is hanging in there and then we'll get through this. And one day we will sew in person and I'm gonna hug everyone a million times. So you better be ready for that. I'm just gonna check if there's any questions. I don't see any. Okay, thanks. I'm, I hope you guys have a great day and I really enjoyed that. I'll talk to you guys later. I have to figure out how to, how to stop this. Thank you.